Hi y'all and welcome to the live stream. I am about to tell you a story so far-fetched that if you read it in a novel, you would say to yourself, come on, he needs to be a little more realistic. That just, it's just not going to happen that way. But the murder that I'm going to tell you about was very real. And I'm going to tell you the story about how the police say it happened. It was the week before Christmas, December 18th, 2022, just six months ago, Natalie McNally, who was 32 years old, spent the evening with her parents in Lurgan, Ireland, watching the World Cup. She had lived with type 1 diabetes since the age of three, but she was thrilled to be 15 weeks pregnant and on her way to being a mother for the very first time. In the early evening, she drove back home from her parents' house and CCTV footage shows that she arrived at about 7 p.m. Her boyfriend, Stephen McCullough, was 33 years old. He was at his own house that evening. He had a YouTube gaming channel, Vote Saxon 07, with 35,600 subscribers. About 4 p.m. on the 18th, he posted a message to subscribers telling them that he would be live streaming starting at 6 p.m. And I'm going to show you what he posted. Here it is. And he called it the Violent Night Christmas Live Gaming Stream. Streamy goodness. So he actually used the word violent in the title for his video. And he posted that on Instagram. He, the title, the description, everything made it perfectly clear that the video was going to be a live stream. Notice, for example, it doesn't just say the Violent Night Christmas gaming stream. It's the Violent Night Christmas live gaming stream. And you can see that carried through in everything that he did. Let me flip over to the next document I wanted to share with you. And you will see that the description he put on YouTube called it, said this, celebrate the most joyous time of year by watching a drunk mash buttons on a controller as if he's some sort of expert, then go mental after failing miserably. No, he already knew he was going to fail miserably. All in real time, Merry Christmas. Notice he again pointed out, this is in real time. Now, most live streams, I wouldn't say, I'm going to do a live stream in real time. I would just say a live stream because it's sort of redundant and it so, but he said, he pointed out again, that it was all in real time. So he wanted everybody to be completely clear on that point about what was happening. And I want to say thank you to Tom for the super chat. Tom has more legal troubles than anybody. I'm glad that you watch the channel, Tom. Uh, so, um, and the, so in addition to Instagram and in addition to what he put in the description, he also had this, which he, when he went and talked about what he was going to be doing on Instagram, he posted this surprise, join us in two hours time for some festive streamy goodness. Again, all caps live exclamation point kicking off at 6 PM GMT. He wanted everybody to be very clear. This was live. This was not something recorded in advance. He was going to live stream. So we are going to watch some clips from that live stream together. And fair warning, they are completely normal if you don't know the context. There's nothing unusual about them. But if you do know the context, they're kind of disturbing because of what he says. So buckle up because it's going to be a wild ride. And speaking of wild rides, we are on a wild ride. Let me go ahead and uh, get remove that. We are on a wild ride to 100,000 subscribers. We are so close. We're at 99,000 something right now. So please subscribe and help us get there. And you definitely want to subscribe before Monday because you don't want to miss Monday's live stream. We go live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. I'm a Harvard Law graduate with more than 25 years of experience actually trying and litigating cases, actually practicing law. And I break down the cases everybody's talking about and put them in plain English to make it easy to understand. So you don't want to miss Monday's video. We're going to be interviewing Jason Crawford. He Facebook canceled him, deleted his account, 
and nobody would talk to him about it. So he sued Facebook and Juan, and he's going to come on and he's going to tell us the inside story about what happened. It's been reported in all the major media, but in little bitty form, just a slight blurb. This is going to be in depth and you're going to find out the truth about what really happened. And I want to say thank you too to Ether Bunny. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. So also hit the like button if you would for the video. That'll help YouTube get it out to more people. So let's get back to our, our tale. Just three minutes before Stephen McCullough's live stream was supposed to start at 557, Stephen texted his girlfriend Natalie and said, right, I'm off to stream the night away. Wish me luck. His subscribers were pleased, but clearly surprised to see him be on a live stream. And I wanted, I captured a few of those for you. Here's what one wrote, streamy goodness, it can't be. It's been years. So it isn't as if he regularly was live streaming. He had not, and I'll tell you exactly how frequently it was in just a second. John Smith wrote, it's been a while. My video maker 100 wrote, good evening on your end, Stephen. Been a long time. So all of his subscribers were a little bit surprised to see him live streaming. He hadn't done this in a while. It wasn't something he had regularly done. So I looked it up. I was curious just how often did he live stream? And he had um, only live streamed once in the year prior to this one. The year before that, he had live streamed 13 times in one year. But that the year right before this, only once. And it was about six months before the violent Christmas video. Now, Steve, during the video, which we're going to watch key excerpts of, Steve McCullough chattered on and played Grand Theft Auto for six hours and four minutes. It was a very long live stream and ended just after midnight. Dozens or hundreds, it's hard to know how many saw it at the time, people saw him during the live stream. By the next morning, though, Stephen had been concerned because he said Natalie hadn't responded to him. So he went to her house where he found, discovered that she had been brutally murdered the night before. According to police, Natalie had multiple stab wounds to the neck. She had head injuries from a blunt instrument and someone had strangled her around the neck. Natalie's own father would say he had trouble identifying her body because the wounds were so severe. This is what he said. I had to look about three or four times before I could say, yes, definitely, that was Natalie. What he'd done to her, he battered her, he hit her over the head with something, he strangled her, she had bones broken her neck too, and then he stabbed her to death. He didn't just come in and stab her, it was a frenzied attack. The suspicion immediately landed on Stephen, the boyfriend who had found the body, and he lived a little less than half an hour away from Natalie in Woodland Gardens, Lisburn. In fact, he was actually arrested. It wasn't just suspicion. He was arrested. But he had the perfect alibi. Dozens or hundreds of people had seen him during that live stream. How could he possibly have committed the murder when he was live streaming for six solid hours and the murder occurred somewhere in the middle of that time, time frame. How is it even possible? So by December 24th of 2022, the police released Stephen and stated publicly that he had been eliminated as a suspect. Now, after he was released, Stephen was the picture of the grieving lover. He went to Natalie's parents' home frequently. He attended a rally to help her family and to protest violence against women. He prepared a montage of photos and video of her life to be shown at that rally. Natalie's parents were so touched by Stephen's deep grief at losing her that they allowed him to spend 20 minutes alone with her body on Christmas night. That was reported in the papers. But police say those good feelings may not have been mutual. They say that Stephen left a phone at Natalie's parents' home in order to record their conversations so he could figure out whether or not they suspected that he had committed murder. Now, the, he says he left the phone just by accident. But police say that ultimate, but police ultimately came, everyone did, to the same conclusion. 
Stephen McCullough could not possibly have murdered Natalie because he had the perfect YouTuber alibi. But that alibi began to unravel as police found CCTV footage. One tape, for example, showed a man walking toward a bus stop at Kingsway, just two miles from McCullough's home at 7.09. The man was the same height and build as McCullough. He had on a large hood that covered the top half of his face and a scarf that covered the lower half. So the man paid for the bus with cash. And if Stephen was the man, it's here that he made his first mistake. The man dropped his, the man in the video dropped his coins on the floor and then he couldn't pick them up with his winter gloves, with his thick winter gloves. So he took off the gloves and the camera on the bus shows that underneath his winter gloves, he had on yellow orange latex gloves. Prosecutors say they found a glove print with blood on it at the crime scene. The man was carrying a green bag, but the footage shows a black bag was inside the green bag. CCTV later caught a man with a similar walker gate near where Natalie lived in Silverwood Green. At 9 p.m. then, two of Natalie's neighbors reported that they heard a woman scream. At 9.31, the CCTV footage shows the same male leaving the area of Silverwood Green. He was carrying a dark backpack this time and had changed clothing. All of this CCTV footage, which even captured the change in clothing, was the second mistake. The prosecution says the man then caught what he must have thought at the time was a lucky break, but actually turned into the third mistake. He happened across a taxi that was waiting for someone else and got in. The man told the taxi driver there had been a change of plans. His mother was unwell and he needed to go to Lisburn. The taxi driver would later pick McCullough out of a lineup saying McCullough was the passenger. The fourth mistake was that McCullough or whoever it was in the vehicle wasn't carrying enough cash for the taxi fare. So instead of stopping a few streets away from his address, he had to take the taxi directly to his home. At about 11.13, he went in through the front gate and came back out a short time later to pay the driver. He took two bags out of the taxi and threw them over his hedge. To be fair, there does seem to be a time gap in the prosecution's case there. If he left Natalie's neighborhood at 931 and lived just a half hour away. How is it that he didn't get home until 1113? But moving along with the, the prosecution story is McCullough's phone had been inactive throughout this period. McCullough says that's because he was drinking during the live stream. And you'll see some of that footage where he talks about that and he fell asleep. But three minutes after the taxi pulled up to the house at 11.16, his phone went active again. Now, at this point, he should have still been on the live stream. But McCullough says he had fallen asleep, and that's possible given that he does talk about that at one point during the live stream. He then took a short break and said when he got back that he had just fallen asleep. So that actually happens during the live stream. Steven says he activated his phone at 1116 because when he woke up, he just swiped up the phone to activate it before he went back to his live stream. Now, the prosecution believes that McCullough murdered Natalie McNally out of jealousy. They say that three days before her murder, Natalie McNally exchanged 33 WhatsApp messages with an ex-boyfriend. The prosecution theorizes that McCullough found out about these messages on December 17th, the night before Natalie was killed. She stayed over at his house and her phone was unlocked nine times between 1222 in the morning and 954 AM on the morning before she was killed that evening. One of Natalie's family members told police that McCullough did know her password, but still, how could Stephen possibly have killed Natalie. He was live streaming on camera the whole time, except for some brief breaks. And he lived a half hour away from Natalie. 
prosecutors claim that the whole live stream was a fake. They say that McCullough, that they use cyber experts to look at what happened and to look at the footage and quote, technical examination shows that the footage was actually pre-recorded and then played as if it was a live stream. Prosecutors confronted Stephen with evidence that the live stream was pre-recorded and the Belfast Telegraph reports that he admitted to police that the video was not live. So he's admitting that he did pre-record it. And you have to ask, why? Why would you pre-record a video other than to establish an alibi? What would be the reason for that? We don't have his explanation for that. But Stephen issued a statement saying that he had been drinking at home, he'd fallen asleep, and when he woke up, he went out, sorry, he went on his phone and then he went and took his trash out. And that explains why he was outside at the time. Police didn't buy it. By January 31, Stephen McCullough was back in jail and charged with the murder of his girlfriend, Natalie McNally, who was pregnant with his child. Now, the why he did that is difficult to explain except to provide an alibi. I also want to point out what I mentioned in the description. It said, the YouTube description, it said, celebrate the most joyous time of year by watching a drunk mash buttons on a controller as if he's some sort of expert, then go mental after failing miserably. How did he know he had failed miserably? If it was truly done in real time and he wrote the description in advance, then it would be difficult to know that. There's an explanation for that. Obviously, he could say, well, I just figured I would. I mean, it, I was just you know, putting myself down to be funny that I would probably lose. And he also might be, have been saying that I, he even could say I edited it afterwards after I knew or I even uh, put it on there afterwards. But he made the point in that description and all over the place that it was in real time. And as I pointed out, the description says that everything says in real time, all something that would have helped him establish an alibi had it been believed that this was a real time video. And even sort of more disturbing, worse, is numerous people have suggested that he sprinkled little clues about what he was going to do throughout the video. And knowing now that he admits it wasn't live, Let's take a look at the live stream because the police are saying that there are clues within it. So I want us to go through some of the key points. Now, obviously we're not going to do all six hours and four minutes, right? But I think it's worth looking at and figuring out, okay, what exactly did he say in this? So let me pull that up. Give me just a minute. And on this first little clip, I want you to notice this, how many, many times he tells the audience that this is live. And, and, or the date, he says the date, he says it's live. I want you to notice that because I think it's, it's important. Dave. Hello everyone. Um, yeah, a little bit out of the blue this, isn't it? About to do one. But, um, hang on, my levels are just a nightmare. There we go. Bring that down a little bit. Uh, that could be a little bit better framed but uh that's the fun of being live uh yes so hello hello to all on this glorious sunday evening um yeah so i just Maybe. thought why not i'm gonna do a live stream live. because uh this day next week is christmas uh so christmas. what more could you want we... for christmas other than a, a an evening with your old pal steven um, I genuinely do not know how long this stream is going to last for, and I've decided I'm going to play around with it and do something a little bit different. Um, I, I wanted to do a live stream, and I've been wanting to do one for quite some time now. Only trouble is, there's a, there's a couple of elements, shall we say, that have been... Stop it right there. So, he admits right here that he hasn't done a live stream for a while, that it's abnormal. And in case you're wondering kind of what the configuration here, that big black area is where he's going to put the game that he's going to play. And he's in the little box in the corner and it's got a little Christmas logo below him. Been preventing me from doing anything. Uh, mostly it, it has been work and um, it has been 
stuff in my private life. It's also been the fact that the, this computer is on its last legs. Couldn't, <clears throat> pardon me, couldn't hook up the PS3 to the computer to save my life. And in fact, this stream, I'm very worried about. It could end at any moment because I've been trying to set this up. And even by setting up the Xbox in the same way that I did last time, uh, the computer was having none of it. In fact, there was one point where I moved the Xbox, didn't touch the computer, didn't touch any of it, any cables, any wires, literally just moved the Xbox and the computer just shut the bed. It just blue screen to death and it just came up going like, oh, Windows has encountered a problem. And the trouble is, because this is quite an old computer, it's getting on a little bit. I'm going so, and I want to stop it there and mention a couple of things. One, you heard him talk about personal problems that he had had. Also notice that he's setting up a lot of discussion about computer trouble. So if he is the person who committed the crime, that would give him some cover if anything goes wrong while he is playing the video, but not at his desk because he's not going to be able to fix it. Now, this next section that you're going to hear is really bizarre. If you read it or hear it after you know he's been accused of murder, it could almost be a description of his relationship with Natalie. So I just think about it as you hear it. I have to save up and get myself a new one in the new year, but uh, for now, this one's kind of hanging along, you know, like smoke is billowing out of it. It looks like it's running on red diesel and hatred at this point. But yes, uh, it is still working away. Trouble is, uh, it's in a very limited capacity. I'm trapped in the box. And now he's going to use some more odd and very dramatic language to describe what he's about to do, which is gaming. Uh, that I'm currently in. Uh, my little Merry Christmas uh, logo thing. He's saying, I'm trapped in the box here. I've got a logo below me. That's uh, beneath me. And then this thing here, this big black box of destiny, that's where um, the, the game is going to be streamed. Uh, and then, of course, the, the, the nice festive red background. And, of course, I'm wearing my little Santi hat as well. So... And now he's going to explain to his audience that he can't answer live chat. He's going to say... It's due to the computer trouble he's been having. He's going to say that's M, and that's going to be very important if it's not really live to allow him to explain why he isn't responding to people. But there is going to be one big mistake he makes on this count. But he tells him up front, "Hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna respond to you in the chat." What are we doing tonight? Well, because this streaming software is kind of up the left. It means I can't check the live chat, which is a real shame. So by all means, talk amongst yourselves. I could use my phone to dip in every now and again and uh, check it, but I've decided that I kind of hate live streams where people just sit and read comments and go, oh my God, yes, ask me questions. Um, and also if I go on my phone for too long, I'll end up just scrolling through TikTok and the amount of time that I've lost scrolling through TikTok is unbelievable so yeah phones away can't look at the live chat for some bloody reason because if i do it makes it, the whole thing freeze i'm also going to so and now he's going to tell his audience that he's going to get drunk it sounds from some of the things he said as if perhaps he had had a problem in the past but had been sober but is throwing it all away for tonight i just picked that up but i'm not for sure that that's true now note if he did commit the murder, this could be, I'm sure the prosecution will argue that this was all of this talk about drinking and the drinking he literally did on screen was more cover because now he could say, I was way too drunk to possibly commit those murders to get up, to drive over there. I couldn't possibly have done that. Drink during the stream as well, I've decided because... Uh... I think it'll be more interesting if I just get shit faced. Like I did promise people I wasn't going to drink uh, to those people. I do apologize. Um, Cause uh, come on, it's one night only. It's a Sunday night. Give me, give me a chance to just chill out. Will you? I just realized I'm literally going to be drinking and driving in the game, by the way, I'm, I'm not leaving the house tonight. So um, yeah, in the game, I will be drunk while driving in the game. I'll be drunk in real life. I'll be driving in the game. Just, uh, just uh, keep myself 
in the in the good book, shall we say? Oh, sweet nectar, how I've missed you. I've not drank in months. Got it. I'm trying to be sober and healthy and good. I have no idea. So now notice talk about all that drinking. Also notice that he made a point of saying that he's not going to be leaving the house tonight. Authorities say he did leave the house and he killed his girlfriend, but he says the opposite on the live stream. The, well, the live stream, I'll put that in quotes, I guess. Now, the drinking, of course, that doubles down on the idea he could not have committed the murder if he wanted to. He's impaired. He's at home. He can't drive safely. It wouldn't be possible. And he's going to say that, the pro well, the prosecution will say that it also just so happens to protect him in case all of this crashes while he's out committing the murder. How long the stream's going to last for before either I get too drunk, too tired, or I just give up, or the, the stream and the computer itself just crashes. Tell me for Saturday when he has 112 pounds. You know, let, let me break this down just a little bit before we get started on. He's about to talk about one of the characters in the game that he's playing who has 112 pounds. Um, to his name. And he's going to talk about that and, and then listen to what he says. There are $112 to his name. He's 112 pounds richer than I am, that's for sure. That wasn't a hint, by the way. Don't don't super chat or anything like that. Because it, it's it's crimu. It's crimu time. You know? It's time to be a Scrooge. Be selfish. Daddy. So, he's... What YouTuber says... Oh, please don't super chat. Don't super chat. And especially don't do it because it's Christmas time when you should be a Scrooge, when you should be selfish because Christmas is the time to be selfish. <laughs> now, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Pretty much no YouTuber would say that. That is very strange. Now, the prosecution is going to argue that the reason he's telling people not to send a super chat is because he knows he can, would normally respond to that, but he can't if he's not there in person. And in fact, he did get a super chat and he didn't respond. He didn't say anything to the person. Now, next is just some bizarre and disturbing language given the accusations against him. He got very angry at um, a point during the game. And I'm going to show you a comment from one of his listeners, too, about it. It's a spanking boss. No one's coming to save you. That was a and given what he's accused of, that's just kind of disturbing. And this, then he just kind of throws in this next comment, seemingly out of Reading nowhere. Reading somewhere really, recently, like the, the amount of police force that we have lost over the last 12 years is just frightening. And no wonder crime is on the rise. That's why a lot of sticking to just doing crimes in a video game keeps things simple. This is all true. In a lying sort of way. No, it's not it's true. It's actually real. Again, strange. Given that he now admits that he wasn't even really present for the live stream, it's even stranger. Like the language where he talks about, no, this is fake. No, it's actually real. And but the most disturbing part is next. You're about to see the most disturbing part. Now, throughout the six hours and four minutes, Stephen took several short breaks and he played some music and put up a placeholder to say, you know, that he was going to be back and hang on. He was coming back. It was not enough time. None of them was long enough to travel a half hour away, half hour back and murder someone in the meantime. But, but this, this is chilling. This was right in the middle of the live stream, slightly past the middle, but pretty close to the middle. And, there's not a great logical explanation for this. His explanation is kind of ridiculous. Um, look at, this is the music he was playing. I want you to watch what pops up on the screen right here. And me. I'll tell you something. I made a real pig zero that. I just oh, no. saw. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I cover it with that text? I'll really be mad at myself if I did that. Asked for before either I get too drunk, too tired, or 
I am, that's for sure. That wasn't a hint, by the way. Don't don't super chat or anything like that. Because it, it's it's crimu. It's crimu time. You know? It's time to be a Scrooge. Be selfish. Daddy needs a spanking boss. No one's coming to save you. I was reading somewhere recently, like, the, the amount of police force that we've if lost I, if it happens over the me. last 12 years is just frightening, and no wonder crime is on the rise. Sorry, we're having to listen to that twice. Zero that. I just sat down. Let me go forward and see if... And, uh, ah! Could I possibly have cut that out? Anyway, so uh, I have returned. All right, well... I've I'll go ahead and explain it to you, and if it pops up later, you'll get to see it twice, or you get to hear it once and then see it. So what he does is, all of a sudden, up on the screen pops the James Bond, No Time to Die, the logo from the movie. And there's no real explanation for that. It pops up, moreover, right about the time that the prosecution says, he was killing his girlfriend, Natalie McNally. The timeline starts at about six when he said he was going to go live. I don't know the exact time that he ended up going live, but that's when he said it would be. And this happened shortly after nine o'clock, which is about when the neighbors say they heard a woman scream at 931. He's then seen in changed clothes and with a different backpack walking out. The man caught on CCTV is seen there. So what he says is, I'll tell you something. I made a real pig's ear out of it. I just, and here's it. So in the middle of this music that's playing, that, that he kept putting up, that was just a placeholder, suddenly out pops the logo of the James Bond, No Time to Die, and then it pops away, and then he gets on, and this is his explanation I... for it pulled the controller and the headphones off the table which hit the keypad which um it's apparently hotkeys are still connected so it um it went on to something else for a little second yeah anyway uh i have returned so he his explanation makes zero sense that somehow he pulled the controller and the headphones he managed to hit some key and accidentally at that exact moment made pop up on screen, the James Bond movie logo poster, No Time to Die. That's, that just seems really unlikely, but that was his explanation right there in the live stream. Was he playing cutesy? That's what the prosecution says. He thought he could get away with it, so he was just throwing in whatever he could. I'll tell you something else as well. That's how you know you're getting older, because I lay down in a dark room there for about five or 10 minutes. And um, I just, I felt like blacking out. So again, he's talking about the alcohol, suggesting it made him unable to function. And then if he truly used this as an alibi to commit murder, he goes on what can only be described as a very bizarre and disturbing rant. You're about to hear it. If in fact, what he's doing is covering up the fact that he plans to murder his girlfriend at some future point. Remember, he had to be actually recording this in advance. It has to have been planned out enough to have recorded a six hour video in advance and then posted it. Well, do you know what? It's it's Christmas, it's a time of togetherness, you know, so like whenever I'm taking breaks, text a loved one, you know, or a friend or just, you know, family member, someone you haven't spoken to in a long time. Give a little text and go, Merry Christmas, how's things? Maybe it's someone that you've fallen out with or someone that you've just not spoken to in a long time because you know it's life life gets in the way find a little text let's go merry christmas it's like what bill murray says at the end of scrooge you know it's never too late i have too many loved ones in my life but the ones i love i love with all my heart so you know at least i've got that going for me now, the next segment starts out very curious, but turns into an explanation as to more about how the alcohol has made him unable to function. Oh, dear Lord. I think I've made a mistake. A horrible, horrible mistake this eve. Mainly because I've, I've come to a realization. 
and that realisation is thus. Whenever you're young and you drink, it seems to give you energy. You know, you're up and about, bopping away on the dance floor, everything's great. And then you, you hit your 30s. And I think that's why the doctors are always like, oh, do, you know, like one, one glass of wine a day, it'll be fine, you know, it'll be great. Because um, this is the first time I've drank in a very long time, and I think it's really fucking with me. I think. And now it goes on to more very disturbing rant. The important thing to take away from it is to use it as a time, not for what we receive, but what we can give in terms of presence, in terms of love, in terms of sex. It's just been one of those nights, hasn't it? But, um, but yes, I think the... Uh, I think the message rings true that Christmas, it's not about the shopping, it's not about the lights and the tinsel and all that crap. It's literally just about having some time off to enjoy spending time with the people that you love. So hopefully I've done that tonight and given you a couple of hours of madness of me freaking out. So until next time, everyone, thank you for watching. Good night. So you can see that the police will make great hay with that. They are going to claim that all of that was faked, that he did it knowing that he was going to use that six hour and four minute live stream, live stream to cover while he went and killed his pregnant girlfriend, Natalie McNally. Now, there's a section where he goes really ballistic yelling at the computer game. He's just lost and he then drives along the side of the road, mowing down fake people in the video game. There was so much cussing that I decided I, I couldn't edit it enough to even show you what was happening, but his subscribers noticed, <laughs> even his subscribers. And I thought I would share with you uh, what his subscribers, what one of his subscribers said. I've heard Steven rage before during the COVID lockdown streamy goodness, but not as much as he has tonight. I, I thought that was pretty telling because these are people familiar with him. These are people who knew what he had done in the past and thought, wow, that was a little over the top even for him because it was so angry as he went mowing down all of these people along the side of the road and cussing the entire time. So the, we come back to the question, why would you pre-record a live stream? What would be your point? Especially a six hour one. It's not like he edited it or did anything else. He didn't go see his girlfriend, according to his story. So why, why would you do that? What was the point to just sit at home alone and drink? Why not just do that while you were live streaming? And secondly, I point out that description where it talks about he, um, he did this, he went mental after failing miserably. And then that it talks over and over and over again about it being in real time. And it, like I say, you can edit that afterwards, but it also, I think, is important. So I, one of the things I think that we have to acknowledge is that it's possible, of course, to, to do, I guess it would be possible to do, I can show you video so on on this so i could show you a video of me but obviously i'm not ever going to do that i'm obviously only going to live stream things i would never be somebody who would do that oh oh how embarrassing i'm so sorry that that came up on the screen i don't know how that happened it wasn't that i wasn't live streaming earlier so um Without a, without a question, this is one of the strangest cases that I've ever seen or heard of. I've never heard of anyone faking a live stream before. That's a strange, strange story. But I think that what we're going to do is follow this case and uh, let me know in the comments if you think that this is something that you'd like to follow, that you'd like to know about. Because it's in Ireland, because it's not here, it's not as easy to follow. We have an awful lot of coverage of the court system here, but it's still possible, I think. And if it really interests you, please let me know, because I must say I'm intrigued. I'd like to know what his defenses are and what he has to say about why he would pre-record a live stream and some other answers like that. So, and don't forget about our Monday show when we're going to interview the guy who got canceled by Facebook 
and sued and beat Facebook. We're going to find out the inside story on that. He's going to be here. We're going to be live. I'm going to be interviewing him. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. We are getting ever, ever so close to 100,000. So hit that subscribe button. Be sh and also while you're at it, please hit the like button for the video. And I will see you for sure on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern.